As you probably all have guessed, I'm a physician. I'm a specialist in respiratory medicine. I'm a specialist in telemedicine and internal medicine. And I have several academic degrees. Even though I'm not that tall, I'm an authority. And authority needs control. I control my patient by making them helpless. Together with my strong and controlling healthcare system, we are in perfect control of everything. But guess what? I'm also a citizen, and citizens need dreams. Dreams inspire, dreams liberate, dreams are behind any major changes in this world. And you know what? When I dream, I don't wear my lab coat. So I'm going to take it off now. And I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to ask you, should we try and share a dream together? Yes. Imagine we had unlimited power and resources. How would we then design the most perfect healthcare system in this world? Now, please, before we do that, let's keep in mind the essential needs of human beings. And that is, of course, to live a long, healthy, and happy life without any restriction imposed by medical conditions, regardless of age. Now, let me make you some suggestions. Every people should, of course, have instant access to a high quality healthcare system with friendly, competent professionals anytime and anywhere. Empowerment should be the driving force of our system and not a system controlling everything. My health data should belong to me and it's up to me to decide whom I'm gonna share with. And when I share, my trustees should of course have instant access to it anytime and anywhere, even across professions. I should have a coordinated and coherent healthcare plan so that everyone who's working with me knows exactly my situation and there will be no mistakes. I need, of course, one point of contact so that everyone Whatever need or information I might have, I'll keep it the same place, just like in Facebook. Our amazing technology should, of course, move healthcare to me instead of long hours of grueling transportation to health. In fact, we should dream about not being admitted to hospital even when we are very ill because it is in fact possible to deliver high quality healthcare at your own homes. We have done that in Denmark. We call it admitted instead of admitted. And then when we have all this, surely we will have a citizen-centered healthcare system. Now let me give you some facts. Our healthcare system today is in fact exactly the opposite of what we are dreaming about. We don't have any instant access. We have gatekeepers and endless waiting. Quality is budget driven. We have no empowerment but a controlling system. My health data are getting lost between the sectors. And I feel like no one really knows what they are talking about. We use endless of hours transportation, transporting ourselves to our doctors. And that is why our healthcare system, the treatment is truly based upon what we call the hospitalization paradigm. And that is not citizen-centered, it is system-centered. Now, some facts. In Denmark, 
my small country, one third of our population has a chronic disease. Our population is growing older every day. The silver tsunami, as the English calls it, will sweep us away and chronic condition will explode. Soon we will have half of our population being helpless. Now, this is going to be a problem for our hospitals, don't you think so? Because are they in fact doing good? In my small country with only six million people, 5,000 people dies every year because of treatment failures at our hospital. This is 20 times more than are killed in the traffic every day. Every time we put an elderly into a hospital bed, they lose muscle mass. And it takes a lot of resources in rehabilitating them, getting them back into shape again. A new published study has just shown us that elderly people admitted to hospital loses three times faster their thinking capability than a comparable group not being admitted to hospital. So I must ask myself, does hospital make us stupid? Now, my patient Joan, she is 72 years old. She suffers from a severe chronic disease in her lungs called COPD. Last year, she was admitted to hospital eight times. She spent 45 days at the hospital. When she came home, she had paid 28 visits to a general practitioner. Last year, she took 4,000 pills. She emptied 120 inhalers, and she has consumed 700,000 liters of pure oxygen. She never goes out of her apartment. She's anxious, she's isolated. And that could easily happen to you, to you, to you, and to me, because eventually, we will all become patient, and that is exactly why we need to dream of a better healthcare system. And did you know that we, in fact, have both the skills and technology to do so? <laughs> did you know that? Why isn't it so? There are, of course, many explanations, but if I should pick one, it would truly be that the structures of our healthcare system has not been changed for the last hundred years. Fortunately, the aviation industry did better. If not, we would still be flying like this. But in the fields of medicine, we are stuck in an ancient culture, maybe 100 or more years old. And you know what, at this age, of course you must have a chronic disease. And if I should pick a disease, it would surely, if I should pick a diagnosis, it would surely be autism. You all remember Rain Man. He was fabulous with numbers, ciphers, and small complex system. But every time he was challenged by something new, or by some changes, he ran away screaming. But we are not going to run away. Even we know that thousands of innovative people have tried to find a cure. One asks himself, is there a cure? And in my belief, of course there is a cure. And the cure is to start all over again and to make a complete redesign of the healthcare system. But I have not the time to wait another 100 years. So we have gathered a group of innovative people all sharing the same dream of making a better healthcare system, focusing the essence, and that is, of course, health of the citizen. We had no support, we had no funding, but we had our personal resources and competences. And we all had a strong belief in, yes, we can, it's common sense. Instead of talking now about organization, technology, and infrastructure, let me just show you what we've been doing. Now watch here, we call it the epitome, moving healthcare to your fingertips. Joan suffers from a chronic lung disease. 
She's feeling poorly and her lungs are in a bad shape. People in her condition are very often admitted to hospital. But with the epitel, she stays at home. Joan has invited her closest family for lunch tomorrow to celebrate her birthday. However, Joan is stressed with the preparations and a little worried about the arrangement. She's in doubt and considers whether to cancel or continue as planned. Hi Joan, how can I help you today? I'm ha having a little bit of trouble breathing today. I can see your measurements and they look pretty stable, Joan. I don't feel so good. I can hardly move around without having to, uh, to stop. What have you been doing today? Well, I've been trying to get ready to see my family tomorrow. They're coming to lunch to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday! Thank you. How are you feeling about tomorrow? Well, to be honest, I'm a little worried that I might not finish everything in time. I can see you have an appointment with Jamie next week. Would you like to try to consult him now? It would be very nice if, if, if we could do that, yes. Okay. Hi, Joan. Ah, it's your birthday tomorrow, isn't it? Happy birthday! Hi, Jamie. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. So, how are you doing? Well, I'm a little anxious again. And I'm thinking about actually cancelling this party I'm having tomorrow. So, Joan, what did you actually do last time you got this anxiety? What did you do that actually helped you? I tried to, to focus on the things that I could do rather than on my limitations. So how could that help you now, using that experience? I suppose that I could just relax a little and, <laughs> and not worry so much. So Joan, what are you going to decide about tomorrow then? I think I'll just choose to believe that everything is going to be okay. <laughs> right. So Joan, I wish you a fantastic day. And I'll be available tomorrow, if just if you need me. Oh, thank you, Jamie. That's that's so nice to know. I'm so glad you're here. It's the beginning of a real citizen-centered healthcare system. Truly. Joan is no longer a patient. She has been transformed into a citizen again. And this transformation is done by the empowerment she gets from her system that truly is designed to support her needs, her condition, and her life. As I speak, we have a model up running in a municipality outside of Copenhagen. We have a vision that the concepts of the EBITAL should be a part of a healthcare system for everyone on this planet. We believe that we will grow bigger by sharing. And we believe, and that is why we have made the EBITAL in what we call partly open source so we can share with everyone and we are going to grow on all our ideas together and you know why because we're sharing and that is common sense so please join us come and share all your good ideas join our community thank you very much for listening